Right folks, I'm back. I'm going to replace the SSD in my Acer Aspar TC885 PC. Folks, I'll go through the process after I've got it all done of actually loading the Windows 11 operating system back onto the new SSD when I'm done. Okay folks, I moved her onto this white table here just to make it a little bit easier to see. This little box on the top here is to allow me to use a third monitor if you're wondering what that is. It was just a little um, transformer type thing um, that I bought uh, because this um, PC does not have enough uh, ports on its graphics card to support three monitors. So yeah, that's why I've got that. So let's get these two screws out of the back. Get these out first. Might be worthwhile just getting a little uh, pot for your screws because they can go across the floor and you never see them again. I already took this apart as you've seen in one of my last videos, folks. So uh, it's not a completely alien process to me. I'm just gonna leave the wires still on the um, hard disk drive, just to avoid any pains at the end where they have to go. Bringing this down a bit closer, folks. So I've just taken the cables out of the back of the um, disk drive, okay? And what I'm gonna do now is just pop a little black lever off and push the disk drive out. And it just pops out the front. That's it. That's the little black lever I was talking about there. You just push it back with your finger just to unlock it. Okay. And then we should be able to get the front off now. Just by popping these three back on themselves. And this here bends out. Yeah, you can see the other ones on it there are like hooks. So when you pull it off, you sort of just bend it. At like a, it's like opening the door and it just comes off. Happy days. We're nearly there. What we need to do now, folks, is just take these three screws off the front. Yeah. And that'll take that disk drive out here. And the SSD is in behind it, so we can get at it nice and easy. You just need a Phillips screwdriver, one of them star head ones. I would say don't go too wild on these either whenever you put them back in. It's like anything, folks, you know, small. Um, if you are heavy handed like me, <laughs> you can wring them off. Okay, and then you'll be in a world of hurt. So that's those three screws out and then that takes this out, folks. Nice and smoothly there. I'll just bring this camera in. And that's the SSD there, folks just there it might be pretty hard to see here that's it there's one little screw at the top here just up here and yeah i'll take that out now and it just tiny little screw there folks you can see um do not lose that one because the ssd that you get does not come with a screw well this one that i got doesn't so do not lose that all right so to take this here out, it's just a matter of um, getting it with your finger and thumb. Apologies of not being able to get the camera in there. There's not much room. Just get it with your finger and thumb and it just pulls up like that. All right, pulls out. There's a little heat sink on the back of it, folks, as well. That comes off and you can reuse that with your other one. Okay. So I'll just set that down because it's not broken that SSD folks and if something happens now when I go to put this one in and this one is broken even being brand new that can happen at least I can put the one that was existing back in again and still be able to use this PC all right what I would say is when you do take them out don't touch the actual pins here at the bottom the gold pins because that can mess it up so it can. Okay, so it's a matter of getting this thing in with your finger and thumb. There's a, like a sticker thing here to go along the back of it. What I will do is I will put that on and get this back in again. Sorry for getting my big hands in the way. Now you get this little screw back in. Happy days. I'm just going to put this one nice and safely away because we're not home safe yet until this is loaded up with the new operating system in it. So I'm going to put this back in the packaging that the other one came out of. Yeah, so in reverse order now, folks, let's get these bits and pieces in. In goes this drive. 
And then remember, and there's three screws with that. These little silver screws as well, folks, are all the same that are around the case, which is quite handy. So you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. Like I said before, don't go wild with them. Now we get the front on, folks. Like I said before, this is like a door. So you just put it back into its hinges, shall I call them. And from the other night, this does take a little bit of wiggling. So it does just to get home. That's her. Happy days. And what we can do now then is get our disc drive back in. I'll just turn this around. I'm up to. Let's just slot it back in the front here, folks. Yeah. Oh, the right way. <laughs> And here it's snapping home there. And then get the cables back in. There's a two cables there, folks. Um, just to let you know. So the big cable here, this one is the lower one. And then there's a small one there with a the red and black cable on it. That's the top one as you look at it from the side here. So I'll put the small one on first. Just get this torch around. Good job. And then it's just a matter of putting our HDD back in its place, folks. This one here. Just because we didn't remove the cables, it's just worthwhile just probably pushing those home at this stage in case the half came loose. To see if you haven't opened her up again. So, get this bad boy in, so she just slots into place like so. Four screws. So that's that folks, I've just got two screws left and that is for the side cover. And that just slots back home nicely like that. And then two screws in the back of her again. One monster. Two monster. There you go. Happy days. That's the SSD in folks, as quick as that. Acer Aspire TC885 SSD replacement. Now we need to load the operating system into it folks. And I've already got from the Microsoft website an image. An image is just a copy of the Windows 11 operating system that you can download for free from the Microsoft website onto a USB stick or a disk drive, whichever you prefer. In my case, I have loaded it onto a little USB stick, folks. The USB stick needs to be completely empty. That's a good point to note, okay? Because otherwise it will wipe it for you whenever you load the operating system onto the USB stick. So get everything off this here or buy one of eight gigabytes or bigger to do this job, all right? And it's just a matter then of inserting that into a USB port on the machine, folks. All right, so I'll stick that in there. And then when I boot this machine up, I'll go through the process of getting the operating system loaded onto it from this USB stick, which I'll do now. See you soon. So point to note at this stage, folks, I have got another laptop here, as you can see, and I use that there to follow the how-to of loading the Windows 11 operating system back onto the PC, all right? So on that note, it is good to have another computer where you've got a how-to video or a how-to guide and a PDF or a Google Doc that you can follow through. It doesn't have to be another computer. It could be on your phone, folks, or on an iPad, you know? So just bear that in mind because yes, you have lost access to, if it's the only computer in your house, the one that you've just put that new SSD card in. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll go swimmingly. So let's say I'll keep the video on behind me. I can't record the screen, unfortunately, to get everything fired up, but I'll try and keep this as close to the action as possible. All right. So I've got the PC just behind me here, folks. Remember I already said I've got the little USB stick in with a version of Windows 11 already loaded onto that from the Microsoft website. Right, let's turn the power on. <laughs> no bangs yet. Oh. Be a good idea to press the power button, wouldn't it? <laughs> now we've got action. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll see Acer come on this screen. <laughs> I hope.
Fingers crossed. Oh, we've got something. <laughs> oh shit, here we go. <coughs> I've got some things about the BIOS, the basic input output system. Let's press F1 to continue. Hopefully it will give me a prompt here to actually load the operating system because that's what it says in the how-to video that I'm watching over here. Oh, we've got movement here. There's a little uh, circle of death going on. Oh, we've got the blue screen of death. Oh, uh, hang on here, Windows. It's asking me to check the actual language of the Windows operating system. It's actually recognized the Windows operating system install now. So I'm assuming it's picked up that the USB stick that I've put onto it uh, actually holds the operating system for Windows 11. So I'm gonna click install now. Setup is starting. Yes, so it's given me an option to select the new drive that I've got in there now. And it says it's copying the Windows files. So I just have to wait for this process to finish. That's loaded, folks. I'm waiting now. Hopefully this is gonna load this bad boy up here. Getting devices ready. That sounds good. That little beep was the usual startup beep that I hear when it start the computer. So I think it's been successful. Just a moment. Whoa. That looks good. Let's go through our settings here. That's the internet connected, folks. It's just going through checking for updates. You can, if you're an Android user, folks, at this stage, link your phone. But I'm an iPhone user, so I have to skip this and uh, set it up later in the uh, phone link app. This looks good. Might take a few minutes, so I'll see you soon. So I just popped to make a coffee, folks, came back, and I'm ready to go. What I would tell you now, folks, from a security perspective, make sure you create a user account so that you can use that for your normal activities. Save your administrator account, which will be the one you're logged in as now because this is a brand new operating system, folks. Save that for only doing upgrades and installing new applications and doing anything else that administrators have the privileges to do. Do not use your administrator account to browse the internet, folks, because that is a security risk. If someone hacks your computer, they will have full access to do anything they want. As always, any questions, folks, drop them in there. I'm always happy to help anyone out. I will leave this one with you and wish you all the best. Take care and good luck.